So just a few things about the map text labeler. This is something that customers have asked us about for probably 10 or 15 years. Some customers went ahead and worked with map text, which is another company that specializes in placing labels and made, um, and made their own plugin for, for FME to communicate with this. So the, the Danish mapping agency, as well as some, a group in Western Australia, Northern Australia, Northern Territories, let me get it right. Um, Darwin, I think we say. I think that they did uh, this as well. But finally, SAFE and MapText worked together to inject this technology into FME. Now, it is extra cost, so I feel a little bit bad that this would be something you have to buy. But it is, for the right people, it is incredible value. It's worth being aware of. Plus, I'm going to show you some things that you may not have known about FME that are valuable to know on their own. But it's interesting when you combine FME with, with MapText with things you can do. So anyway, they've been doing this forever. They've studied all these font descenders, know that some of the things Jonathan was fighting with. That's what these guys do. Um, and, uh, and anyway, it's great to have them in, in with FME. So simple area labeling. So uh, let's just do zero. This is all Vancouver stuff, so it's nice to be home here to, to kind of show it. And the thing about this, because it is a skill testing question, I do need to show. If you say map text labeler and put one down, you have precisely zero inputs and outputs. So this is a little bit of a usability problem, um, and, the, and we will try to make this more obvious. But what you have to do is go in here first and define the layers. It's because you can have many, many, many different things feeding into here at once to be labeled all in one shot. So there's no actual physical limit. So I'm just going to go and import something in here. I have to pick my output format. And Jonathan, I'm pleased to tell you that Actually, it turns out that ArcGIS and PDF were separated at birth as far as their font genetics go. So if you choose ArcGIS and you go to PDF, it is, seems to be the same font metrics and they work really, really well. So well that I think we're going to add um, PDF to our pull-down list here and just use ArcGIS underneath and not tell you. Um, so anyway, that's what we do there. You've got to also say how many ground units per font point. And that's because label people think in terms of font points I think in terms of ground units, and I was one of the authors of FME, and so darn it, FME works in ground units. So we have this bit of a mismatch. We've got to do a conversion somewhere. So if I say 10 ground units for, per font point, when I go into map text and say six font points, that's going to be roughly 60 meters um, when I'm out on the, uh, on the other side. So that's kind of a funny, um, funny thing that you have to do, but, but you do have to do it. And Dimitri, I'm sure, would love to talk to you about whether we should support map scale or not. Having done that, I can now hit configure, and here's where I would go and first of all say to map text, okay, that's going to be an area-based thing. Please label it. And then, uh, whoops, I guess I have to find the style first. And so I can go and say, yeah, label the name, please. And make a rule. Let's place it by the um, uh, extending at the dominant angle, sure, and say create. And now I should be able to hit this. And then I could say okay and okay. And now I have something coming in and something coming out. And so that's how you set this thing up. So in this example, I'm just going to fire it up. I've set it to uh, run to our viewer. And uh, it pops up. And I will have labeled all of the, all of the um, neighborhoods of Vancouver by their dominant angle. If I say, you know, gee, I don't like that, let's go in here. Let's configure this thing. Let's adjust the rule and say, let's make it tight against the boundary instead. Say, OK, OK, and OK. Then we run this. You'll see that it's all tight now. And so this is part of the flexibility here. Yeah, you can see, there we go. We are tight in against the, the boundary. So because I can define different rules for each input port, and because I have no limit on the number of input ports, I can start to do some fun things. I could, for example, divide my neighborhoods up into the small ones and large ones, have two input ports, and label the small ones differently than I label the large ones using different rules. My, I'm limited by, imagine, my, by my imagination here. So that's a simple. Again, to recap, we add all of our layers. In there, you also get to define priority, because this is one thing I didn't know. The labeler does not promise to label everything. And so it may not be able to fit things in, so then you can indicate which things are more important than others. And then Dimitri has done some tricks in FME afterwards to figure out who didn't get a label, and maybe we can give them a second crack uh, using different parameters, and we'll show that in a minute. So again, we set the geometry types and priorities. 
um, the styles. You'd have these rules, and these are for points. There's different rules for areas, and again, different rules for lines. So you've got a full engine in there. And now here's all the output formats as well. So that's one of the unique things here, because yes, ArcGIS and GeoMedia and a bunch of these tools already can produce labels, but you know what? They can't produce labels if you're going to try to target AutoCAD. Uh, or you're going to want to get to go to MicroStation or some of these other formats. So that's where you can do some, um, some of the power is to be able to target precisely the system that you want and to get some sophisticated outputs. I'll mention as well, and Jonathan I think was, was talking about this in his uh, thing as well, we can also always go to the famous FME Tech Stroker, which I'm not sure how widely known it is. If I go to F use FME Generic and go to the Tech Stroker, now I'm going to get polygons out that are the text. So in uh, Denver, one person said that by doing this, I'll have completed the circle. We'll have started with CAD data that was dumb and without attribution, didn't know what it was, run it through FME, created smarts, done some smart things, run it through a labeler, built something beautiful, and then created dumb CAD data again af afterwards that no longer knows what it was. Um, so yes, you can do this, but um, it would work then no matter where you output it, uh, but it wouldn't know what it was originally. But where this is particularly interesting is if you're rasterizing. If you were using FME to do web map tiling or something, you could label with map text, then stroke, then rasterize with FME, and now you've got beautiful labels in your raster. Okay, so that's that one. Right, so let's go label the transit system of Vancouver, just for fun. So we'll do this. No, I won't save that. Transit labeling is number one, and we'll go ahead and run this. And in this case, I'm actually outputting to uh, MicroStation Design just to prove that we actually can use something else. And that was the thing popping up in the FME viewer. Oh, I didn't output. I was, I was set to do this. So let me do this. And runner again. We'll go to design files this time. And I'll also show one of the great things in FME. Thank you, Jason Birch. Yeah, that's the input. I can say open containing folder. What we learned was that about half the time that people spend using FME is hunting for their output. And so we've uh, made this easier for you. And there's a Vancouver Live, which I just produced. And... Um, let me uh, grab this guy, and it should see Vancouver Live. And so this is the free Bentley viewer, which with any luck will uh, open up that small file. <laughs> okay. And it's, uh, you know, there's probably three or 400 features in there that uh, <laughs> need to be rendered. Sorry, Bentley friends, but it will take a minute while it swaps in. And then we'll get, have the fun of panning and zooming around in here. So anyway, here they all are in their um, glory. And you can see uh, them nicely. Let's get rid of this. And now we can do this. Now, what I've found, and I know that there's a police officer in here, um, but really, I don't think you should use this with a blood alcohol level of more than 0 0.05, because this is kind of a wild zooming tool. And uh, whoa, OK. So anyway, you get the sense of this thing. And um, yes, we got nice labels um, of the whole thing. I should ask Dimitri if there's any part in particular. The expo line nicely expoed out here and um, and so on so anyway that's that one and so that's transit system labeling now we start to do some more interesting FME mixtures in here what if we have something big we want to label like mother Russia or Australia we can start to pad them out by injecting spaces in between the words or the letters and here British Columbia let's let's inject a carriage return or a couple of new lines if we know we've got a long thing that's kind of um, narrow, we can do that. Or better yet, the Philippines. I like picking on the Philippines, and so let's go and pick on the Philippines. This shows off something that we have to thank our friends at NRCAN for. Some years ago, NRCAN came to us and said, um, we are working to generalize maps of Canada. Turns out most of Canada is really little tiny bits of island in the north, and when you got them at a very low level of detail, high level of, high level of detail. I always get mixed up on this. High level of detail. There's lots and lots of little islands. If we want to kind of zoom out a bit, well, all those little blobs are now too small, but what we might want to do is kind of artistically group them together in, in amalgamation is the thing. So FME has this amalgamator transformer whose job it is to take little bitty pieces and make something that is kind of like that shape but bigger. So let's just go ahead and amalgamate our friends the Philippines and look at what happens here. A great and interesting tool. So let's, oh, 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 don't look. Okay, so here's the original Philippines. And if we just label them naively, we get this. And 
I have Dimitri here. Dimitri, as a cartographer, how do you like these labels? He doesn't like them. And he shouldn't. They're not good. So let's get rid of them. And let's say, instead of the original Philippines, what if we amalgamated the Philippines into that? So temporarily make a fake geometry. We will never actually store this geometry. We make this temporarily in our workspace. And then we lie to map text and say, here's the Philippines. Please label. And so then the Philippines comes out like that, which looks pleasant. And then inside of our FME workflow, we just throw away the Philippines amalgamated and go back to the original. And you know what? It looks good. And so this is, again, combining the power of FME with the map text labeler. We make something that isn't real, label the unreal thing, throw away the unreal thing, and we've got a nice label. And so um, that's amalgamation. So while I begin to talk about the next thing, we're going to go for complete and total world domination here, world labeling domination. So I'm going to let this run while I go out here. So that's amalgamation. Right, we did that. So now you can start to add some other FME power into things. Look at the size of things. Look at the area. Look at the length. Figure out, are these things fairly circular? There's a circularity thing in FME, or are they skinny and narrow? Which way are they tilted? You can start to filter all these things and then route to different labeling rules within one labeling workflow. And that's this world domination thing. And so uh, while I'm letting that run, we'll also talk, we can label North America. And the Saskabush guys, look at how nice that is. They get their labels going up and down. And uh, everybody else gets their square, but New Brunswick gets at an angle. All of this is done by routing things to different rules. And the Americans get all their labels as well. So you can zoom in here. Most of the states are all big enough to have their labels horizontally, so then we don't have a problem. So let's go back here. I think we're still busy labeling the world, but I'll talk about a couple things here. So this area here is where the guys who were um, aggregates or multi-part are getting amalgamated. And then ultimately, we route all the countries through this test filter, which basically divides people up by their area. So we got big countries, average and small, and the technically uh, named teeny countries down here. So the big guys go into a space adder, which is going to inject, pad out their names with extra spaces. The average guys and the small guys go into here. These guys all get labeled at once with different rules for everyone. And the output of these is taken down to a feature merger to figure out who didn't get labeled. And the guys who didn't get labeled, together with the teeny guys, go into this flow here, which gives each country a number. And then we're going to try another crack at the labeler where these guys that didn't get a label the first time get instead labeled up here with their number. And what, what we also do is replace all the other labels we did make with their bounding boxes, whoops, don't look, um, with their bounding boxes so that we don't put any of the numbers colliding with the labels we already made. So if I look in here, I can see that this says the tiny guys, and they're going to be labeled, and the areas are not. These areas are the bounding boxes of the existing labels. And so I think that's probably the magic of this thing. And so when we get to see the world here, we see we, here's the list of all the guys who didn't get labeled. We look at guys like Canada. Canada would have been amalgamated and labeled, which is why we're crossing over into Hudson's Bay here. If I go down, uh, see Mexico also would have gotten amalgamated. Um, if I look over here, at, it's always dangerous to kind of look in here, but let's take a look in um, the middle. Let's not, let's not look in the Middle East, but let's take a look over here and see that the Croatians managed to get a label. They would have been amalgamated, and they were big enough to get a label, but sorry, Serbs and um, Macedonians or Slovenians, maybe. Uh, these guys uh, didn't, uh, they, they got just numbers. And if we go over to Southeast Asia, let's take a look what happened down here. Indonesia. A great uh, example of amalgamation working, and the Philippines as well, but Papua New Guinea, no problem uh, for it. And then lastly, we take a look over here at the legend. This is all the guys who got numbers, and we see, whoops, we see that Tuvalu gets number one as it should. Okay, and so we'll leave it there. And... Uh, Right. We saw this morning the, the kind of fancy pants stuff we can do as well by injecting colors and things afterwards into a multi-line label to highlight certain things, so we won't discuss that 
further today, right now. Lastly, Dimitri's done some experimentation where you engage FME's parallel processing on the labeler if you know you have chunks of labels that don't interact. So in my previous example, I probably could get away going by continent and, and do the world in a bunch of different processes where I do North America, South America, Europe. Europe and Asia, maybe I'd lump into one, but I probably am okay. Um, Africa and... Um, in Australia, all of them separately, then it would get done quicker. And Dimitri has done some examples with labeling utility things in subdivisions and forking them out based on subdivision or region and getting it done basically eight times faster. So if you're interested in the, in the parallel processing, you can look at that there. So if you have any questions today, Dimitri is with us. Go ahead and ask him. Otherwise, visit safe.com slash map text where you'll see uh, a number of, uh, a bit of marketing fluff, a nicely made video by Tiana um, as well that kind of goes through these same things. But more importantly of all, a link to FMEpedia, which gets into the details of how you actually configure this thing if you really want to do a great job of microstation. That's the trickiest one. Um, the other ones are not as, as tricky. But jo Jonathan PDF would do well, and some of your workflows you might be able to uh, make use of this as well. So anyway, that is...